Hey everybody, welcome back to our YouTube channel and today I have with me my husband and we're continuing our series, A Living Kingdom. Okay, so as you can see by the name of this channel, you know, Melanie by Grace, the revelation of grace really changed my life um, completely, radically changed it. Um, I experienced grace in a number of different ways once I completely surrendered my life to Christ, um, especially when I was in law school. Um, so as many of you know, I was in law school and I began my journey as a single mother. Um, I had my daughter Reagan at the time and that was also the time where I really felt um, it was kind of coinciding with the time where I hit rock bottom and I really just learn to you know surrender to god and lean into what i later understood was his grace and his grace is what carried me through law school where i was able to graduate um enter into practice and later on you know met my husband i guess at the end of law school is when i met him and began to date him and then married him uh, i guess 15 something months later after we started dating and honestly, the undercurrent of all of that has been this revelation of grace that has carried us. And so today, we just wanted to share, you know, how grace has so impacted our lives and has helped us to live uh, kingdom as we've been encouraging you all. Right, babe? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So first of all, I think it's important to break down, you know, what is grace? So grace can simply be defined as the unmerited favor and kindness, loving kindness that is shown to us by God. Um, I guess there's two branches that really flow from grace. Mm -hmm. uh, the first branch would be focusing on that merciful, loving kindness by which God exerts his holy influence upon us. That's how one of my concordances defines it, and I think it puts it beautifully. The second branch, or the second definition of grace that we need to keep in mind is how that influence by God shapes our hearts. How that influence is exerted upon our hearts and how we react to that influence meaning that it is a change agent in our lives and that it empowers us to do the things that God has called us. And I think, you know, people get um, one-tracked when they're talking about God's calling. They think it's just, you know, vocation. They think it's just an assignment, something that they're put on earth to do. And while it does include that, later on in this video, we'll talk about how it also empowers us to do other things that we're called for. Um, so, um, when we're looking at grace, first of all, as being a change agent in our lives, um, we see this, um, first of all, throughout scripture. Um, so the first scripture that supports that would be in John 1 and 17. And it says that, you know, the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And indeed, it is by grace you have been saved through faith, which is in Ephesians 2 and 8. <clears throat> so it's by God's grace merciful kindness that we were saved by Jesus Christ who died on the cross for us. It was freely given. I want to point out when you were talking, um, mm -hmm. just a, a little aside, God gives us help. And that's what this grace is that I'm going to talk about. In fact, God is a father. And just like a parent, you want your child to be protected and you want your child to have right. the resources, the things they need to succeed. Right. Um, so starting off, um, it's going to Romans 5, um, 7 through 8. And I'm just going to read it quickly. It's uh, in the Amplified. It says, Now it is an extraordinary thing for one to give his life even for an upright man, though perhaps for a noble and lovable and generous benefactor someone might even dare to die. Verse 8, But God shows and clearly proves his own love for us by the fact that while we were still sinners, Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One, died for us. So this is good because this for me shows me that that grace, that God in a, um, I guess pure love is the way to describe it, said that while we were at our worst, while we were sinners, um, God decided to pay the ultimate price for us. And what's cool is the fact that we think the grace mentality is that once I have grace, that I have to do something to 
earn that grace. Right. As in, it's now that I have it, I have to now depend on my works to continue to keep that grace. Right, or maintain it. To maintain it. Right. The, the issue with that is the fact that if we weren't able to maintain it or attain it to begin with, it was all God. If we then think now that we're saved, we don't need God in terms of His grace and it's on us, then we're still missing it. The scripture is great because it reminds us what grace what that foundation is. It's God's love. While we have nothing to offer Him, He mm -hmm. comes. And grace also is empowerment. It is a change agent in our lives. It empowers us to live for Him and to do what He's asked us to do, which of course encompasses us, you know, living for Him. So Paul wrote that it is by the grace of God I am what I am, and His grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. The grace of God, it empowered Paul to do what he was called to do, and that was to preach the gospel. The grace of God empowers us to do not only what we were called to do, but also to live a holy life overall as well. Paul's letters um, in Ephesians and Titus makes this clear that grace does help us with the callings of God in our lives. Um, first we see in Ephesians, as a prisoner for the Lord then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient bearing with um, one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. Paul's letter to Titus makes it clear that grace also empowers us to live godly lives as well. To not only do in the assignment, but to live righteous, holy lives as Christians. It says here that for the grace of God has appeared that offers salvations to all people. It, which is grace, teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. So, taking this understanding that it's God's merciful kindness towards us, that's grace, and then that it's a change agent, that influence of that kindness on our hearts, that enables us to do um, vocations or callings or whatever assignments around us, but also just to live an upright Christian life, I think our generation then has, you know, three takeaways here that we could really put into practice moving forward as we strive to live kingdom. So the first and you know that we've talked about is that we as a generation we need to extend the grace that we've been given, that merciful kindness that we received. You see too often we're ready to cancel someone. You know we are so excited to you know jump and hear you know, rumors or stories, we want to hear what's going on without having all the facts, well, having a limited perspective, and it, we forget, honestly, Proverbs 18, 17, that it says, you know, testimony may seem true until cross-testimony is given. And it's this lack of understanding that allows us to leave hateful comments on social media on a matter that we don't have all the information on, to jump into an argument that has nothing to do with us, or to rush to get some tea or gossip, I guess, on a matter, to pass judge it and make character calls in people on which we do not do life with. And I think that if we're in a walking and living kingdom, we have to understand that we need to give grace, give that merciful kindness in the same way that we've received it. And in doing so, we're not going to rush to tea. I don't want tea. I want to be empowered. I want oil. I don't want tea. I want oil in my life. And if I want to operate in that anointing and that oil in my life and live kingdom, pursue God's kingdom and see his kingdom come and his will be done on this earth, as we say in the Lord's Prayer, then we have to operate in the grace that is given to us, understanding that there's merciful kindness and we have to extend that which is given to us. I think the second revelation that we have is that we need to stay in our own lanes. And this goes to that second definition of grace, meaning the empowerment to live out the call that is on our lives. We saw in scripture that Paul was um, empowered to preach the gospel. And some of us may have that call in our life. Well, all of us have that call in our life, honestly, to preach the gospel. I mean, we preach with our lives, to be quite honest. But I, I think that we have to tighten up our understanding of how grace operates with our calling. So I think that there is somewhat of a solid understanding that 
grace is not some kind of get out of jail free card where we can just kind of whip it out and just say hey I'm free from sin um, but I have seen grace used as a vehicle to do whatever we want rather than what God wants I think people aren't operating in the grace that's given to them for the task that God actually calls them to do rather we kind of run after our own plans and our own goals and then we kind of attach God's name to it um, and it's like we're trying to attach his grace to gift things that we don't even possess um, I think people you know they often ask me how I managed to go through law school. They asked me, you know, how did you do it? How did you manage to be a single mom and manage to, you know, go to school, you know, full time, take the bar, all these other things. And, you know, I always respond to them that it really was truly the grace of God operating in my life. Um, you know, I, I always respond with that. And for some reason, people aren't very keen on hearing that. Well, some people aren't very keen on that. Um, but honestly, he was the one who kept me and he was the one who empowered me and graced me to go through that season. And I even look back on that season now and I think to myself, I don't know how I did it. And I don't think I would be able to do it today that, you know, what I did before, because there was grace for that season and it's not here now. Um, and I think if we all get that revelation and saying, you know what, God, what is it that you have for me to do? What is the grace that is on my life? What have you empowered me to do today for a specific assignment, purpose, vocation, calling, not only to live gospel, live kingdom, you know, from a general Christian standpoint, but whatever it is that you've asked me to do today. Right now, I'm operating in a grace where, you know, I'm at home, as many of us are. You know, I have the children with me day in and day out. There is a grace for that. And it's often very difficult to lean into the grace that I have for this season, and I keep depending on the grace that I had last season, but that season is not my season right now. Mm -hmm. So I can't keep trying to compare, you know, oh my gosh, I wish that I was, you know, in court, or I wish that I was doing X, Y, and Z right now. That's not where I'm at right now. And I keep reaching for a grace that's no longer there. The grace has lifted for that season, and this season I need to operate in my own lane. And I think many people in our generation need to grab hold of that revelation personally the last one i think babe is something that you can chime in on yeah. see him so the last point of grace is talking about his power uh, it says for if because of one man's trans trespass death reigned through that one much more surely will those who receive god's overflowing grace and the free gift of righteousness putting them into right standing with himself, reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Going to verse 20. But then law came in, only to expand and increase the trespass, making it more apparent and exciting opposition. But where sin increased, and this is the part, but where sin increased and abounded, grace, God's unmerited favor, has surpassed it and increased the more and superabounded. So this scripture for me is powerful because it talks about the power of grace. And it says that for me, for instance, mm -hmm. when I have a struggle, when I have a problem, when I have an addiction, when I have anything that is bad that I don't like or desire, God's grace says that you can focus on that little issue or big issue, or you can focus on the fact of God's grace. Now, to bring it to scripture again, mm -hmm. Paul brings this up in 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 9, which I'll paraphrase it. It's the account of when Paul says that he prays to God, mm -hmm. I have a thorn in my flesh, it's right. persecuting me, it's, it's giving me hardship, take this away from me. And God, again, that loving father, instead of saying, of course, son, easily, done, he says, my grace is more than enough for you. And so God is saying, Paul, focus on the fact that this problem, even if this problem is somebody who's literally trying to kill you, this problem is like a, an anthill in perspective. And my grace is like taking that anthill and putting it next to Mount Rushmore. Mm -hmm. In that context, we quickly understand that God is saying, you're focusing on the wrong thing. You're forgetting who I am, meaning who God is, that right. God unlimited, unsurpassable, amazing, right. awesome, big God says that my power, my grace is at your disposal. 
it will easily take care of any situation you're going through. It, it's not to, to, so that you don't go through the situation, it's so that when you go through the situation, you are empowered to be victorious. Right, the grace carries you through the problems that you're facing. Exactly. And one big reason is because a lot of, uh, we get this question fairly often is, well, why does God let bad things happen? Again, right. God does not cause bad things, but why does he let it? Well, because growth, it's the same thing as though, um, say we get saved, the Bible calls us immature Christians or Christians, babes of, um, I don't know the expression, but a babe in Christ. We like the milk. Well, it, it tells you to desire the, the meat, which suggests that you are growing. Well, if God sees you at point A, yeah. but he knows that one day you need to be at point Z, and point Z, who knows what awesome that looks like. You have to have a, a resistance or a, a growth that comes from the same analogy of lifting weights. If you don't have resistance, your muscles will not grow. If I'm lifting the air, it only gets so big, but if I have a 50 pound weight, now my muscle is going to get much bigger. So God lets mm -hmm. bad things happen or allows us to go through things knowing one, his grace has already ensured the victory so that we can grow. So I think in applying this then to, you know, living kingdom, um, understanding then that for our generation, God may not remove the problems that we're facing. You know, he, he may not. Instead, he may take us through him and causes us to rely on the grace that he has for us through that problem. And I think it's so easy for us right now to get off track from that grace, from that perspective, as Joshua was talking about, um, when we have so much going on in the world. Of, you know, I mean, turn on whatever news media you want to. We still have the coronavirus at hand. Some of us are still sheltering in place. Some of us still have to go through quarantine. Some of us may have lost loved ones to the coronavirus. I know that certainly has hit home for us, for our family and friends. Um, there is, you know, the flu season is on the horizon. People are at home with their kids. A lot of people have lost their jobs or, or, or their businesses or whatever else have you. There is a lot of trouble that is at hand. And even today, um, I guess, well, by the time you all see this a few weeks ago, there would have been hurricanes that were afoot, you know? Um, there is a lot of issues that the world is going through. And I personally would be, believe that, you know, the, the world is travailing or the earth is travailing. It's experienced these birth pains that are to come, you know, when Jesus arrives, you know, but that's a conversation for another day. The point is God's grace will carry us through all these problems that we see, whether it's big macro problems like that, or the micro problems that we may be facing in our everyday lives, such as, you know, being home with kids and trying to navigate that and keep our sanity. Um, marital problems, you know, or interpersonal problems with your family members or just um, whatever else you may have going on just personally. God may not remove that thorn from your side like he talked about with Paul. But he may tell you, you know, that your his grace is more than sufficient for you in that season that you're going through right now through those problems. Right, so yeah. we really appreciate you all joining us. Um, please subscribe. Feel free to leave a comment for us. Um, let us know, you know, your thoughts and, and whatever else is on your heart at hearing this message. And you know, stay tuned for our next part of our series where we'll be discussing joy and living kingdom. Thank you guys so much.